Yeah, so, uh, so welcome to class. Um, for uh, those of you, Elaine and Fiona, that are uh, here, thanks for showing up. Uh, and for anybody else that is coming in later in the day, perfect, or whenever you can. Um, yeah, just maybe pause for a moment with a breath and a, a long exhale just to Appreciate yourself for showing up to whatever is going to unfold over the next uh, hour or so. No expectations. Um, my name's Kathy, for those of you that might not have seen me before. And uh, this is an all levels flow class. So you just uh, uh, modify and go at your own pace. Um, I have been finding it helpful to revisit for, for myself some of the you know, kind of simple science around the nervous system this week, um, because this autonomic nervous system that we have is such an amazing um, vehicle that is completely <laughs> nothing to do with our directing or any consciousness, but just that we have the sympathetic side that, um, you know, helps us to be ready to fright, flight or freeze. Um, when we need to, when there's an emergency and, and all of the things that go into that our blood flow shuts down to the organs and um, our breathing might become more rapid if we need to be on our tiptoes and run or it might come constricted, constricted and shut right down so we can curl up into a little ball and hide. Um, it takes our higher thinking levels right offline though. So um, all of that is fantastic when we need it. And then we have the parasympathetic side, which is the when we can give ourselves a message that things are okay, we're safe, there's not an emergency, then that side of the nervous system, hi Candice, uh, kicks in and the blood flow comes back to the heart, back to the organs. We can digest our, our food again. Um, and so these two things balance each other off and they're both, um, both beautiful and what's going on right now. Um, we're always a little too much on the, uh, on the sympathetic fright, flight or freeze side. But over the last year, uh, the threat is always, there's a perceived threat and we may not even realize we're kind of, Mm, taking it all for granted now that we all walk around in masks and kind of look over our shoulder and we cross the other side of the street. Just those, those simple things that we all share collectively that are keeping us on that high alert. And then the effects um, of not having the uh, ability to hug and contact and be with friends and family so much. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty huge. Uh, so if you're noticing... <laughs> any of the effects of, of that in your own experience, then you're in good company here. So we'll, one of the ways to, to tap into the parasympathetic side of the nervous system is really with the breath and to have some longer exhales right away that sends the message to the brain that, you know, things are okay. So um, just to play with that in your practice today and if focusing on on breath causes anxiety at will for some of us, then you can have another anchor. It can just be the body or sound or any sensations. And all of this with some curiosity and friendliness to the experience of whatever's arising. And so we will start lying down and there's nothing that you need today. Uh, if you like to have extra props, blocks or something to go underneath your hands or something for your mat, for your knees or your back, then you'll know what those are. So go ahead and set yourself up so that you're stretched out on your back. And do that mindfully. So pick up the head, the skull. You might even massage into the back of the neck a little bit with your, your fingers 
or the base of the skull, feeling that occipital ridge. Maybe some tenderness there as you draw that a little bit more, a little more length and space there and lay the head down on the ground or if you have a pillow, that's fine too. And then wiggle a little bit around so you can tuck the shoulder blades underneath your back body and they can widen and flatten like two patio stones. The arms can lengthen out from there or you might have your hands come somewhere on the lungs without thinking about this. Seeing where things go so that you feel connected with the soil and the nutrients that are coming from there. And the legs can be long and floppy or the knees might be bent and the feet wide with the knees into touch. And start with your eyes open, taking in the surroundings, the field of awareness that's here right now. And then if it's comfortable, you can let your eyes close for a few moments here and just relax that, that area of the face. Literally feel as if you're laying yourself down in the, the garden or in that soil that's a little bit springy coming up to meet and support and comfort and give some ease to your bones. You might send yourself a, a message right now. that it's okay to be here lying down, knowing that you're lying down, knowing that others are here as well, having the shared experience of connection to breath, body and movement in community, noticing what you may as an individual being be bringing into class on an emotional level, some stress or some agitation or fear, some, some energy or excitement, or some joy, gratitude. And these things can all be present at the same time. So the, the mind is a, a very big, vast space. And everything that's passing through it right now, including thoughts and sensations and feelings of weight, heaviness, or tension in certain areas of the body, all of that is passing through in the same manner that clouds pass across a, an open sky. They come and they go and they change shapes and they're always moving and impermanent. Nothing to grip onto, nothing to change or force or hurry up. <laughs> Sometimes the winds blow with a lot of velocity and other times it's kind of a a stagnant and things don't seem to be moving, but they, they are. Let's take a few breaths in through the nose and then exhale with the mouth open. Breathing in through the nose and opening the lips to make the sound of the ocean or a ha, releasing some carbon dioxide and one more time Deep breath in through the nose and pause. And then empty, 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 empty. Allow the lips to come together as you breathe in and out now the ocean wave and a bit of massage at the back throat, at the thyroid gland there. Just in your natural breath. I'll start us off with a few rounds of cued breath together. 
and just follow along if it makes sense in your body, not trying to grip too tightly. Then you can continue to have your hands resting somewhere on the lungs if that is helpful or just at your sides. Finishing the next exhale and breathing in for two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four. Breathing in, two, three, four. And out, two, three, four. Let's breathe in for four. And then take a longer exhaling for two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Just like that again, breathing in for four. And a longer exhale to five, four, three, two, one. In, two, three, four. Let's go to six this time. Two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two three, four, exhaling, two, three, four, five, six. Do two more rounds on your own. You can take it to eight or drop it back to four. See what feels good in your body, inviting that ease with this practice of Longer exhales into the sympathetic nervous system. We're balancing with the parasympathetic, the calming side. And then let all of that go and take a big stretch out. Lengthen the legs and the arms away from each other and make fists with the hands. Tighten everything that you can. Tighten the legs, squeeze the calves, the hamstrings. Draw the belly in, try to press your low back to the floor, even though it won't come right down. Squeezing the upper arms, the forearms, and even the face, all the muscles of the face to center. So you, you might notice that it's, it's hard to have a, a full breath here, but just stay with me, stay with it. Feel the contraction and the tension and the tightness that is here when the, uh, Sympathetic nervous system is overactivated for one more moment. And then just flop. Deep breath in through the nose and exhale, let it go. Let's place the feet on the floor now with the uh, feet hips distance apart and bring the fingertips down towards the heels. A few pelvic rocks with the breath, the low back drops and the tailbone peels up at the hips, don't lift. And then inhale, take the tailbone towards the floor and let the hip fronts roll forward. Forward and back on the exhale, the low back presses. Full surface of the feet press on the inhale, draw the hips forward. Exhale, press again. Knitting the ribs down towards the pelvis and inhale to rock the pelvis forward, filling the lungs. Exhale this time, low belly drops and hips lift up, not too high. So feel most of your upper back still on the floor. Just take it to about the heart rate monitor line and take a few breaths there. Just feeling the weight of the hips, but some uh, engagement in the hamstrings and reaching the inner thighs long. Let's lift the left uh, heel off the floor. So come to the ball of the left foot, breathing in. And then exhale, lower the left heel. And then lift the right heel, press the ball of the right foot. And exhale, lower the right heel. Let's lift both heels on the inhale, keeping the Upper back still grounded. Take an exhale there. And feel some shaking. Breathe in one more time. And then with the heels lifted, slowly roll it all back down. 
bringing the heels down and just take a breath in there. Let it go. Reach the arms up towards the ceiling now with the palms facing each other. Let the upper arm bones heavy or retract back into the sockets and then reach the fingers up on an inhale so you feel that protraction. The scapula moving away from center and then hug the shoulder blades back down on the exhale. Let's reach it up, inhale, press the back of the head to the floor and then hug it back down. And one more time, lift it up. And exhale, drop it down. And then bring the hands back down beside the hips, press the palms and uh, we're gonna press into the left foot and the right arm, the right shoulder and float the right foot a centimeter or so. Just feel the muscles in the core start to warm up or engage. And then lower the right foot. Now let's press the right foot extra strong and the left arm and shoulder strong and see about floating the left foot. Just an inch or so should feel some engagement in your core. And the left foot drops. Let's do the other side again. So left foot presses. Right arm, right shoulder press and right foot lifts. Breathe in, lower the right foot, press the right foot. Left arm presses, left foot lifts a little bit, breathe in, exhale, lower. One more time, press the low back down, lift the hips up, come to a higher point this time. So your upper back starts to peel off the floor and take another inhale. And exhale, lift both heels. Let's breathe in there again, full breath in. And then a long, slow, little longer exhale to ripple all back down. The heels stay lifted if you can. Bring it to the floor on the inhale there. And exhale, float the shins now. Knit the ribs down. Now that we have a little more sensation in the core, press your hands into your thighs and keep the knees moving just above the hips. As the hands press into the thighs, knit the ribs down again and feel the core engage towards the floor. Breathe in there, feel the lungs, just relax. And then again, engage, press hands and thighs. You try to straighten out your arms without moving the legs. Relax on the inhale. And one more time, press thighs into hands and vice versa. And release there. One more time, bring the hands beside the hips, shins still hovering in space. And we'll tap the right foot down, keeping the same angle with the knee, reach the right shin back up parallel with the left and then exhale left foot taps down. Inhale, lift left shin back up. Right foot taps. Inhale, right shin lifts. Left foot taps. Inhale, left shin lifts. One more time each side. Notice the effects on the throat and the face. And one more breath to draw the knees in towards the chest and give a Nice squeeze there. Nod your head over towards the right on an exhale and bring the head back to center, inhale. Just releasing the face and neck as you look over towards the left shoulder. Back up, breathing in and one more time over to the right, massaging the back of the skull. Inhale, center and exhaling it over towards the left. And back through center there. Open the arms wide. Let the knees track again so they're more or less over the hips. We'll do one more thing here. We'll press the palms and shoulders firmly to the floor and extra press with the left palm. And start to track the knees over towards the right but not coming too far. Not letting the left shoulder lift up. Let's take three breaths on this side. That's one. Two. And you don't have to be following any pace of mine. 
just for purposes of a frame of reference, three and back to center. Knees stay tracking over the hips, take a breath in there. Now knees start to come over towards the left, stretch the right arm away, right shoulder stays grounded, dropping the right hip, just using gravity to drop that hip towards the floor as we take three breaths on this side. So it's more of a core than a twist for three, two, and one back to center. Breathing in and exhale, squeeze the knees in towards the chest. You can roll over to one side or rock forward and back along the spine to come up. And just take a seat for a moment. You might give yourself a bit of height, whatever's comfortable so that the, the spine feels long. Let's reach the arms up here on the in breath and just stay on the out breath. Growing a little bit taller through the spine on the inhale. So we're making room for the digestive organs. And then exhale, let things kind of settle a little bit. Lengthen, expand the breath into all sides of the torso on the inhale. And then exhale, there's a little bit of a grounding, dropping down. And one more time here. Breathing in the right fingertips come down. Lengthen up through the left arm as you take a side stretch up and over towards the right. Let's take three breaths there. You can have a bend in your right elbow. Let's see, play with your neck a little bit, looking down or to the side, maybe looking up for another inhale. And exhale, lift up both arms, reach up, inhale and settle back down into gravity into ground lengthen up on the inhale we're lifting the ribs off the digestive organs so there's some space there and exhale soften one more time lengthen and left fingers come down reach up right arm and tip a little bit staying connected through the right sits bone and Bending the left elbow for a side stretch, looking down over the left side. And then maybe towards center and up towards the right arm, just exploring some tension that might be in the neck. And reach up again, breathing in. And press the walls away, exhale. Take a look over towards the right with your chin level to the floor. And then inhale center and have a look over towards the left. Feeling the sensations under the arm, come back through center. Let's flip the fingers towards the floor and make a fist there as you look to the right. Inhale center, notice if your chin is poking forward. Just tuck it back a little bit, lift the back of the skull, take another breath in there. Long exhale to look over towards the left. And then through center, right elbow over top of the left elbow. Give yourself a hug. Whatever it is that you feel, the heads of the shoulders or the upper back ribs. Oh, my hands are cold. And breathing in there. If it's available to you to take an eagle shape with the arms, then the hands move towards each other in front of the face. Lifting the elbows a little. And from either shape, just start to move around here, some side to side, circling, getting into the obliques a little bit, the side ribs, and finding some small cow shapes as the chin tucks in, or sorry, cat, and then the cow in the upper back keeping the ribs knitting down as you do that. And then just open up into a cactus shape and squeeze the elbows back a little bit there. Take the hands to the back of the skull once again and give a little bit of a digging, massage, feeling the tender spots behind the ears and just pulling upwards a little bit. 
Squeeze the elbows towards the ears and let your chin just nod in towards the chest. A little bit of weight through the back of the skull, pressing the hands back in space. And then come back to center, release the arms. Let's just change the cross of the legs if you're sitting in that way or give yourself a, a, a reset. To come back and press the palms away again. Looking over the left shoulder this time, exhale. Inhale, center and exhale to the right. Inhale, center, flip the fingers and make fists as you look to the left. And center, inhale, trying to keep the head nice and light above the sternum as you look over towards the right. And then come through center. We'll take the left elbow over right elbow and give yourself a hug. If you did the other side, doesn't matter, just find what is different on this side. Lifting the elbows a little bit here or taking the eagle shape with the arms, circles with the elbows now. Exploring the little bit of twisting and some of those cat and cow movements. And when in, you find the mind is active and off in a planning or in some of that scanning for threat, something or worry about what's coming later, then just tune back into breath or sensations in the body. When in doubt, a longer exhale. Open the arms into a cactus shape. Squeeze the elbows back and take the hands to the back of the skull once again and just lift the base of the skull up. Squeeze elbows towards the ears as you look down, exhale. And then release the head, bring it back to level. Let's do one thing here to take the right hand just to the um, back of the neck on, that, on the left side. And taking that right hand and giving a bit of a, a massage or a swipe down and across towards the chest. As you do that, you reach back and then as you're sweeping it down, take a look over the left shoulder. Just see how that feels. So look to the right as you reach back and then sweep down and look over the left shoulder. Looking to the right, sweep back, give a little pressure there. Give a swipe down towards the heart and look towards the left. We don't get to uh, touch too many people, just giving yourself a little affirmation in the center of the chest. And let's do the other side. So reach the left arm back. Just kind of get in around the back of the neck or the shoulder, wherever you can reach. Look to the left. And then as you swipe the left, Hand down towards center, look over the right shoulder. Go slow here, looking to the left as you reach back towards the right side of the neck or shoulder. And then as you give some pressure down and across, look to the right. Inhale one more time through that. Hand over the sternum for another breath in. Good, and release. Let's come on to our hands and knees. After sitting for a little bit there, just spread the fingers, take your knees a little back from the hips and start to swing the tail from side to side. As you take your hips over towards the left, also start to take your gaze over to that side. So pick up a little on the right side and then sweep the tail through center. Take the tail over towards the right. Stretch your neck nice and long and as if you could see back towards your right foot. It's a bit different, but opening up some space along the left side lungs. Let's do that again. Sweep the tail through center as you look over to the left and your Left hip reaches out to the left, might feel like a small movement. So you're making an, a bit of an arc with your right ribs and back through center one more time and go in the opposite direction. 
You can come through center here and breathe into a little cow. And then exhale, come back into child's pose. Let's come forward in that long table, squeeze into a little cow, the shoulder blades come together. And then exhale, take it back in towards a child's pose. Inhale through center, one more time, squeeze the shoulder blades. And exhale, take it back towards the child's pose and take three breaths there. If you wanna stretch under the arms, come to your fingertips for three, two, and one, let's shift forward now to a plank pose. Knees are back of the hips and chest and belly are drawing into the back body. Neck is nice and long. Let's take three breaths there. You can have the knees down or you can curl your toes under and lift the knees without lifting the hips too much. Sauce of the elbows moving forward. One more inhale. Tap the knees, exhale and lower all the way down and stretch the legs long. Come to the fingertips and take a baby cobra on the in breath and then exhale, lengthen forward and down. Right away, let's slide the hands back, narrow towards the rib cage, press up through table and then right back into a child's pose. Exhale there. Let's come through table. And curl the toes under and pick the hips up for downward facing dog. And taking three breaths there just to explore. First time through the shape in the class today. You can have the knees deeply bent. A couple more breaths just to play around with bending one knee and then the other. And then come high on the tiptoes and shift back to that plank pose. Then tap the knees down, take another breath in there. And then on an exhale, chaturanga to lower all the way with the narrow elbows. Fingertips in line with the shoulders, loop the shoulders and a baby cobra, or you can go back to that gecko shape. Exhale to lengthen forward and down and press the palms to low ribs, up and back and into a child's pose. Let's just take one breath in this child's pose. Good, and then inhale forward to table. And curl the toes under, exhale, lift the hips up for downward facing dog. And we'll take three breaths here. Just letting the breath be that wave, embodied breath, the structure. The next inhale brings the body forward and the exhale taps the knees and lower all the way. Inhale another cobra, upward facing dog is an option. Kneecaps will be lifted. And the exhale to press back through table and child's pose for one breath, one full breath cycle. Inhale. A long exhale, soothing the nervous system. Inhale comes to table, toes curl under, hips lift, downward facing dog for three, two, and one. Let's just shift to table again. And we'll take the left hand a little bit forward to make some space. Wrap the left ribs under as you open to the right and the right arm can reach away. Try to keep the arm, you know, in a good relationship with the shoulder. So not trying to crank it up if it, it doesn't come with the ribs and then wrap it underneath. So we'll thread the needle just a few times. Open up on the inhale, feel that the obliques again. And then the exhale takes the right arm across and over towards the left. Once more breathing in and we'll come all the way down for three breaths on this side, resting on the right side of your face and shoulder. A press into the left palm or fist or crawling the left fingertips forward for three, two, 
and one. Slide the left palm down towards the face to lift up into table. Curl the toes under again and press the hips up downward facing dog. High on the tiptoes and shift back to plank pose. And plank pose could also be a forearm plank pose with the elbows down and the hands clasped. Knees up or down for a breath here. And then knees tap down. The whole thing comes down. Let's all come into the a variation of the Sphinx pose with the elbows a little bit wide. Just under the shoulders or they can be further forward if there's any pinching in the low back and feel a lengthening of the tailbone. For three. Just seeing if you can deepen the exhales and the softening. Two. And one, lower down for this one and have your uh, forehead rest on your palms with the elbows wide, making sure that the legs are long again. You can uh, do a bit of a swim out of the legs to activate the abdominal muscles lifting up and in towards the back. And then lift the elbows, lift the forehead and the hands. You can let the weight of your head just rest there. So not coming up very high, but feel that your the lift of the elbows is helping to strengthen the muscles in the upper back. You take a couple breaths there, might be a little bit of bobbing. As the breath does what it does. And then open up the arms, reach them towards the back bringing the thumbs towards each other and the palms facing upward. Toes can stay on the floor or the legs float a little bit in this variation of Shalabhasana for one more inhale. Exhale, lower palms press to low ribs through table. Into child's pose. Another full breath cycle in child's pose. Playing and balancing with the nervous system. Let's come back to table. And we'll do the second side for threading the needle. So bring the right hand a little bit forward. You can hold the right ribs just to feel that engagement of the lifting and wrapping under a little bit and then lengthening the left arm away from there. You might notice one side shoulder is tighter and then bring that underneath and across without coming all the way down. Open on the inhale. And then the exhale brings out the cloth. Once more, open it up. And then exhale, come down this time to rest on the left shoulder, left temple, or wherever might, you might land or not. Sliding the right palm to press beside your face or reaching the right fingertips forward. And then dropping into the pose for three, two, and one. Right palm presses to lift back to table. Toes curl under, downward facing dog. Just letting the head dangle, making a few shapes with the jaw, the face, you can stick the tongue out, squeeze the eyes. One more breath in and exhale high on the tiptoes. Take some teeny steps, some weight in the palms until there is no weight on the palms as you walk towards the front of the mat and lengthen up halfway. And fold on the exhale. Do that again, come up halfway. And fold on the exhale. Just have an awareness of the neck and see about lifting the back of the skull a little bit so you feel that your spine is parallel in a neutral shape from tailbone to the crown of the head. And exhale, fold. Last time, lengthen. 
And exhale here and just hang out, unhook, ungrip from the neck. Take your tongue and press it into either side of your mouth. So just give a press there. This is connected with the neck muscles. Try to touch your uh, the area at the back of the right bottom molar with your tongue and then the left top molar with your tongue, the right top molar and the left bottom molar or really just push your tongue around. <laughs> Take a deep breath in, ah, let it go. I'll do a slow roll up this morning with the knees bent and the arms nice and loose. You can shake a little bit the wrists and the fingers. Just keep on with the looking down and letting the head be heavy. And coming all the way up to bring the shoulders up and down and around the back a couple of times. Coming to <coughs> Samastitahi, equal standing, shifting, find your center of gravity and awareness of being here, uh, the connection between ground and sky, and the energy through and along your spine and all of those communication centers, just getting the message that things are okay. It's okay to be here right now. Let's reach up on an inhale and fold on the exhale as we start to move into some flow and come back up halfway on the inhale and exhale to fold. We'll step the left leg back and tap the left knee down. You can have some padding underneath there if that's better. Sitting low in a lunge and then exhale, take the right hip crease back and draw the toes towards the face. Sitting low into a lunge, breathing in and exhale, right hip crease draws back. Inhale into the lunge this time, press down into the right heel and get a little bit lighter on your fingertips or maybe float them off the ground. And then come all the way up into a crescent lunge. Exhaling into cactus with the arms and continuing to find some core engagement. You might move your rib cage back a little bit further. So the stretch comes into the left front hip psoas area for one more breath there. And exhale, bring the right elbow underneath the left elbow in the hug or the eagle shape. And then tuck the chin towards the chest. Lift up on an inhale and exhale chin to chest. One more time, inhale and exhale here, releasing the hands to press on either side of the foot and pick up the back knee. Let's press some weight into the palms and step right back, downward facing dog, exhale. We'll shift through to plank pose and tap the knees down, exhale. Lower to the ground. Finding a back bend with the breath coming in and lower again on the exhale. Or you could just be in cat cow doing some movements there. We're moving back through table or you can take a break in child's pose. We'll meet in downward facing dog and settle the breath for two more rounds. Let's bring the big toes together and take the left leg up and back. Just feel a three-legged dog bending through the right knee so the hips have a little more squareness to them. And then bring the left knee towards the nose as the shoulders come just ahead of the wrists and reach that leg up and back again. And then left knee towards the nose, shoulders over the wrists. Once more, lengthen out, breathe in. Long exhale to draw the knee forward and then step the left foot up. Let's take one breath here in this low lunge. Then push off the right foot, step the feet together at the front as you fold and let it go. Halfway lengthen, breath in, exhale, release. 
Pressing the palms to come all the way up. Inhale and right away, sack and side, exhale. Just let the thinking brain be offline for now. Breath is the movement halfway on the inhale. And fold on the exhale, the right leg steps back and the right knee taps down into a low lunge. Breathing in there. And then exhale, left hip crease, left toes. Spine stays long. On the inhale, these rocking lunges. Exhale, the back toes can be curled under or the top of the foot can be down. On this inhale forward, we'll bring the arms up into a crescent lunge. Settle for one full breath cycle. And then draw the ribs back a little bit and cactus shape the arms, tipping the elbows. We're moving them a little forward and the palms towards the ceiling. One more breath there. And then take the eagle shape again, left elbow over right, lifting elbows. Chin to chest on the exhale. Inhale. Chin to chest, exhale, puffing up the back of the heart. Again, inhale. Long exhale. Bring the hands down, picking up the back knee to low lunge on the in breath. And then stepping back down, we're facing dog. You can take a break here or child's pose or come through another flow to plank. On the exhale, the body comes to the ground. Cobra or upward facing dog, or just embody the breath in a still shape. And we'll meet whenever you're ready in downward facing dog. Big toes together, right leg reaches up and back. And right knee towards the nose. So round the spine, come into a three-legged plank, and then stretch it up and back, three-legged dog. Right knee to nose again, three-legged plank. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, hug everything into center, lift the shoulders. And then reach it up and back. And this time we'll step forward. Maybe I gave you an extra one there. Stepping forward, keeping the back knee lifted for one breath. On the exhale of feet, meet at the front of the mat for a breath in there. And let it go, exhale. Let's turn the toes out a little here and start to drop in towards the squat. Lifting a little bit in the sternum and then exhale, peel the hips up towards the ceiling. You might be high on your tiptoes, dropping in towards the squat. You can come up on the heels and then exhale, peel the hips up. One more time, dropping it down. And then exhale to take it up. And parallel the feet again, come up halfway, inhale. And exhale, fold. And press into the feet, come all the way up. Inhale. Exhale, trace the center line. Pause for a moment there, releasing the arms. Just shake it out. So let's swing it, taking uh, the weight from one foot to the other. You can come off a heel and just loosen everything up here. Let the head, neck, and shoulders go. Connect with your organs, giving them that massage and just the message that they can do their thing. Process and eliminate the leftovers. Good, slow that down. Let's step, let's step wide, not as wide as you can go, but let the heels come in. And let's drop into a more of a standing goddess squat with the hands on the inner thighs. Let your head just be held by your shoulders. All of the, uh, the weight of the looping of thoughts, just 
chill it out here. Back to the Ujjayi waves of breath or maybe something else can be your anchor sound or sensations in the legs. Let's drop the left shoulder and look to the right. And then breathe through center, contracting the outer thighs and glutes a bit as you look to the left. And then come back through center here. Let your head come up now. And bring the arms into that goddess shape for three. Little pulses for two. Moving the knees away from center for one. High on the heels, one more inhale. And if you can keep the heels lifted just for fun, come all the way up straight and the legs reach, reach, reach. And then exhale, bring the feet down, the arms down, just like you're moving through water. Let's parallel the feet, loop the shoulders, and clasp the hands. And you can keep your, uh, you can have your elbows quite bent and squeezing back together. Unless you prefer to straighten the arms. Lifting up through the breastbone and then folding forward, halfway pause. Micro bend at the knees as you come the rest of the way. Taking three, two, and one. Good, let's just release the hands here to the floor and stretch out a little bit like a wide leg downward facing dog. Sending the hips up and back. One more breath there. And then however it is that you get to a regular downward facing dog, let's do that. We'll bring the big toes together again and we'll make our way towards a pigeon pose. So. Right leg reaches up and this time let's open the hip and bend the knee, heel towards the bum cheek on the left side. And squaring up the shoulders. And then right shin, right knee comes towards the right wrist. For this variation of uh, pigeon and you could put a, a blanket underneath your right hip if you like. Shifting the weight from side to side. If you are not comfortable, if any, concern about the knee, then just bring it onto the back into a figure four shape. And let's take five breaths. Either resting on the back and still protecting the knee with a strong flex in the right ankle crossed above the left knee. Or resting on the forearms or forehead to the floor or on fists. Two more breath cycles. Just slowing it right down. If you're on your back, just stay. If you're in the first variation, walk the hands underneath the shoulders and curl the back toes under to press up and back, downward facing dog. Big toes together, left leg reaches up and back and open up the hip. Let the left heel magnet drop towards the magnet on the right outer hip buttock area. And then shift the weight forward, looking towards the hands to bring the left knee up towards the left wrist. <clears throat> and you can choose if the left hip is lifted to put something underneath there. You can look back for the right leg to have it be lengthening in the same line as the hip. Or you're on your back in the figure four shape with the left ankle crossed above the right knee. Coming to a place where the breath can be full and the exhales can be a little longer and deeper than the inhales. That's the action of compassion towards balancing this 
an amazing nervous system that we all share. And stay if you're on your back and uncross. If you're in the other version, then rest over to the left hip and bring the legs around. Let's all just meet uh, sitting and lean back a little bit with the knees bent and drop the knees over towards the left side and press the right shin towards the floor. So the right hip will lift up and then walk it around, walk the right arm around. The left hand comes back a little further so you get a twist here. You can stay up on the left hand or come down on the forearm and just let the head nod over the left shoulder for three. Breath embodies this shape, awareness of breath moving into different areas of the lungs. The inhale brings the body back around to face forward and then just switch over so the knees can drop over to the right. Press the left shin for a moment and lift the left hip up. You can use your hand here to feel that. Help the hip to roll forward and then start to make the way towards the twist. Walking the right hand around a little bit. Woo, getting a cramp. <laughs> So you can bring your legs closer together or further apart and stay up on the right hand or rest right down on the right elbow, looking over the right shoulder for three, two, and one back through center. Good, let's take the legs forward, give them a little shake. Spring up on the fingertips to lengthen the spine once again. From here, we'll take a forward fold, reaching the arms forward and drawing energetically the ground or the legs back. Or you might wrap your arms, your forearms underneath your thighs. You can have quite a bend at the knee. Choose your variation. We'll take three more conscious breath cycles. One, two, Three, releasing the arms to sit up. And so we're heading towards final rest. We uh, started a little bit late, so we're gonna run a couple minutes past if you can. And if you can't, then thanks for coming. Uh, I'm thinking of an inversion for the last couple of minutes. It could just be your, if you have a blanket or if you have a pillow, something to put your seat on so that you can come down. This would be like a block. If you have a chair, you can also just elevate the legs. Feet can stay on the floor or heels can float towards the ceiling. If you don't feel like that, then traditional Shavasana stretched out. A <sighs> Couple of exhales to release anything that may still be gripping. And I'll ring the bell to take us into Shavasana as well as on the way out. Giving permission for all of the functions of the digest and rest side of our system to be at ease.
Noticing the activity of the mind. Perhaps a looking forward. Or bringing back something from earlier. No uh, need to change any of that. Just the practices with curiosity and kindness, allowing all to be be here. It is anyway. In a moment, you'll hear the sound of the bell. It's a way to start to come back. And to bring fingers and toes into some small movements, stretching it out. If you feel like a bigger stretch, the whole body lengthening and rolling over to one side. Pressing up to sit. Reorienting, your eyes can be open just a little bit to take in the light. To rest the hands in the lap or at the heart center and take a moment to uh, acknowledge each other's support for showing up. Some gratitude for this body, this moment, all of the things that are easy to take for granted that are working pretty well or going, going well. There's, there's lots else for our attention. All of the, the thread and the scanning or that, that stuff is happening. So it takes a bit more practice to be on the other side. Namaste.